leadership qualities which are all to absent from our national discourse. And by so doing, remind its leadership that this time it has to be different. That this European leadership has to be different. It cannot be business as usual. We cannot continue as we have come up to now. It has to be different. In a country which is rife with political personality cults and which is marred by a corrosive culture which has dominated and continues and continues to dominate and permeate every sector and facet of society. My question to LPM leadership is how does LPM keep a check on national leaders and on regional leaders upholding, maintaining, and owning principled service as leaders? How does this political baby, which has made massive strides in a short period of time, ensure that the political gains it has made in the short term are not staying in outpaced on the long term by a type of leadership which undermines the very ideals that should hold its leaders accountable? How do you make sure that the things that you make, the political character that you have sought as a political organization, that we have by the type of leadership, the quality of leadership, in the various forms, in the various In such an established culture of their world dependence, this LPM has to outsmart itself, not to fall victim to the very same evils which partly birthed by holding itself very easy. To say, hey, can't it. Hey, can't it. It's quite easy to do that. But when you have to turn around and look at your ministers and council, who is this with nonsense? Yeah. But you have to cover them back. Why? Because he's not here. Remember what Dr. Gillette said? Constituents and the voters already have a perception. Remember, I'm a teacher by profession. I'm a priest by vocation. So it's very easy for me to, to, to check the pulse, the pulse of the LPM for my parents because they are saying what their parents are saying. It's quite easy. The Lenders People's Movement does not operate in the vacuum. Of course not. Nor does its leadership and membership alike remain unscathed by the aura of corruption, the culture of entitlement, and the attitude of lack of transparency and accountability, which has brought us to the present state of leadership vacuum in our nation on its knees. Namibia doesn't have to be poor by no means, because according to some estimates, we define our geographical location. But this nation has failed to feed the children. She has failed to employ the youth. She has failed to stabilize the families. And she has failed to ensure that our elders retire with honor. Why? Because of a poverty of leadership on an unimaginable scale. One of the amateurs that I have come to learn as a priest, fortunately, I'm not as a man, is that join the priest and see the world. Boy, have I traveled. <laughs> I have traveled a lot. Another adage, on the other hand, which is a little bit more negative, 
is that the painful reality is encapsulated in the saying, if you want to make a quick buck, become a politician. <laughs> it therefore doesn't surprise or come as a surprise that most of our political elite have become much like millionaires in the past 30 years. How do I tell my learners as a teacher that education matters? Where they see it daily. Grown folks who have little or no education thrive because of their political connections. How do I convince them to finish school? What is LPM doing? Is it going to be the same? Same day? Just different faces. I wonder, my fellow Namibians. How are our brothers and sisters, who have made a quick buck at the expense of the nation, respond when their children inquire about the souls of their own? How does one feed your family when bread obtained through dishonest means? And for which you haven't sweat or twelve one day? The only work you put in was to destroy the very institutions which was made to serve the nation and it has been put at your personal and you have compromised the very systems which ought to have political leadership specifically but leadership in general forget who is the source and sum of your leadership. You didn't become a leader for yourself. Every quality, every ability, every gift and talent that you have is at the service of the people. And to do so, honor them. Honor themselves. Every action or inaction has internal consequences. Healthy leadership. Every action or inaction has eternal consequences. Why? Because anything that is not eternal is eternally useless. Why am I talking about eternity? Because we predate our conception and our birth. I think I lost you there. Let me make it a little bit clearer. We predate our conception and our birth. Before we were born, we already existed. Yes. Our existence in time is only a continuation of our existence in the mind of God. And we will continue to exist afterwards. So what you are doing now has eternal consequences. This nation may be quiet now because of the lack of prophetic, servant, selfless leadership. But history will remember. Will the real leaders please stand? And after he had made all the promises, the 
It was an old man. The usually is an old man. He did not sit on a chair. He was sitting on the floor. And I'm going to say this in my mother tongue. And he asked the leader, my dear LPM leadership, it loses a lot in translation, but I will try. What it means is basically that you are campaigning and making such beautiful promises, but once you get the seed, and when you eat, will I be able to wipe my mouth? Will I be able to do it? My dear LPM, LPM leaders, come on, sir. Come on, sir. What is feeding and who is feeding your people? Remember, my fellow leaders, we never had the beautiful experience of transitioning from slaves to freedom. We never had that. One moment, I still remember the flag coming down, our president smiling beautifully, most beautiful smile. Flag coming down, 11.59, Namibian flag going up. As the flag came down, come down, we were you know, shedding our own slave shells. And now as this come up, we became free. Nobody helped us in transition. One moment, we were slaves, no rights. Next moment, we had everything. It is my prayer that 31 years after independence, the landless people's movement would help this nation to transition. But the landless people's movement will help this nation not only to gain and regain its lost dignity, but that this nation will transition to the greatness that it can be. <laughs> My question to the parliamentarians of LPM is as follows. What is the founding creed of this nation? Is it corruption? Nepotism? Political opportunism, tribalism. What is the found? What are the founding ideals of this Namibian nation? As leaders, LPM leaders, what are you pointing for the future of this nation? For this nation to rise despite our differences, despite our political to chessers that are just where we're writing. What is, what is LPM doing in order to help us transition? I have a reason why I ask you to look at the person sitting next to you. I am a leader, or at least so they say, in the church. And I know firsthand. I'm not blowing my trumpet, but I am loved by the people out there. My question is, do my own fellow priests love me? I want you to return in your mind to your uh, chairperson of the management of the, of the regional councils and the minister, the mayor of the towns. And I want to ask you do you know the councils? Do you know how many children they have? Do you know if they are married? Do you know if they had a breakfast this morning? Do you know if they are going to have supper tonight? Do you know if their uh, accounts are up to date? As I said, Dr. Bilal was talking about your relationship with others. I'm focusing on your relationship with each other. Can you 
hold yourself and hold each other at home. Are you an honorable human being? Because we are always human beings before we get anything else. Before I am a priest, I'm a human being. Before I'm a priest or a teacher, I'm first a human being. The level of, of sanctity, the level of respect and dignity I have as a human being, I will bring to my ministry. That is why Jesus spends three years with his disciples. And he tells them, guys, don't be about how the world is out there. Because when Jesus entered the fray of Jewish society, Jesus saw a poverty of leadership. Leaders who want to hold others accountable, but who are not accountable themselves. And Jesus told them, guys, please, do not be like that. You must be accountable. I wash your feet. You must wash each other's feet. You must be servants of one another. You must be humble servants who come to serve and acknowledge the servants, not as those who are bossing others around. I would like to come to the figure, the biblical figure of Daniel. I would like to share some, some of his character traits and other views. Daniel was a person of character. Who will claim a hood at you? Do you okay? Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I Do we have it? Or is it easy? Or is it easy? Do you know what I mean? 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 Many of us who are leaders in Asia are coming from the ground. Those of us who are from all countries, and those of us who are leaders, we are not the same. 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 My question to you is what is your character as a, as a leader? Daniel refused. He refused to do wrong. In front of foreign leaders. He refused. When he was seated in your office with a group from Germany or with a group from America or the Chinese, you know, and they are giving you an envelope, do you take the envelope? Or what do you do? Because if you take that envelope, you are not the only one for me. LPM will be for you. Because you are representing LPM. And if you do not represent the values and ideals of LPM, when nobody sees you, this organization will implode. Why? Because of the corrosion from within of its own leadership. Competence. How can we put people who are incompetent in leadership positions and expect to be? How can we be ethical? How can we be servants if we are just putting people into positions and they have no competence? But that's not the core point, the problem. You can put anybody in any position if you can add value to the yes. Convictions. He refused to touch the banquet of the king. Be about your convictions. Stand firm on them. No matter what. Even if you have to stand alone. Even if you have to eat porridge every day. Stand for your convictions. Because if you can't stand for some, you are going to fall for everything. Courage and courage. Many times you will be thrown out like you say. Many times people will call me and tell me, they are not going to be a school or not. They are not going to be a school or not. They are Many times, many things will come to you. 
All I'm telling them is, Martin, you come in, you're supposed to come in. I'm not coming, you're not going to come in. To your personal ideals before you become an LP. Commitment to yourself. Coaching our respect for our opponents. You can defund the enemy from one another, but do so respectfully. My fellow leaders, I would like to share with you shortly some ideas about continuing your leadership. But from the book by Patrick Lencioni, you see, I'm a disciple of leadership. I've been reading extensively on the morning, and this book is The five minutes is taken in front of And um, Jay Z Maxwell, one of my greatest friends in terms of leadership, is also referring to him extensively. But Patrick Lencioni is very clear and unadulterated when it comes to leadership. Very important when you are having meetings as a municipal council or as a regional council. The first five, the first five uh, dysfunction is absence of trust. Now, when I talk about trust, I don't mean if I want to have or listen to a very nice speech, I would listen to Bernardo song. I know he's going to deliver. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you, Master Pullman, standing and naked. Not leaning um, there, but standing naked in front of the council. Meaning, they know my weaknesses, but they are not using them against me. Yes. Yes. To stand naked in front of them. Not be hiding yourself from your fellow leaders, but also from the people. I can easily and freely relate with my fellow leaders. Why? Because there is trust among us. I can trust them with my life. Yes. But the very first one is, Absence of trust. Can you look at your municipal councils? Can you look at your regional councils? Can you look at your national leadership? And can you truly say that you trust one another? Is there something that Bernardes is holding back from Annie? Is there something that Bernardes and Annie are holding back from Edson? And the, the other lady, what is her name? Is there something that you are holding back from her? Trust is very important. If there is no trust, the second dysfunction is lack of commitment. If I don't trust you, I'm not going to commit to what you're giving me. If I go into the meetings of an LPM, I must hear the heaven dialogue and debate. The heaven where people are really taking each other on, not about the tissue, but about the issue. Yes. Yeah. 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 I am beheld toward getting standing up for what I believe and for the benefit of the electorate. How is this going to translate into restoring the people's dignity? So if I don't trust you, if I cannot stand naked in front of you, if we cannot, you know, as was even for skill from the garden, and as was even for harder and others for without uncertainty, that's how I need something to do. Because you did not get my buy-in. Yeah. You did not listen to me. You did not hear me. You only heard yourself. And you only heard what you wanted to hear. And I want you to hear. I want you to hear what I haven't said. I want you to see my nonverbal communication. 
I am saying, no, it's fine, it's fine. But the smile doesn't reach my eyes. I want you to see the God is in Jesus. If I do not have, if I have an absence of class, as I said, then I fear of conflict. Fear of conflict will lead me to lack of commitment. And then fourthly, lack of commitment will lead, lead me to avoidance of accountability. Avoidance of accountability. The army of leadership is accountable. Not the mayor. No, no, I let him persuade. Now you are having a meeting and in the meeting you did not agree with the decision that was taken, the resolution that was taken. That was not a resolution of a part of the LPM. It was an LPM decision, including you, who did not agree with it. And if you go out there, you are going to defend two players for elected. Not go out there and say, like, what about some stem of mine? It was a funny deal for the Spriggers. And then it was not a master last of all. And that's what you told me to be my God. No, no. Whatever I hear about the LPM as a leader, I inquire first. And if I don't agree with it, I stand with my party. And if it is nonsense, I criticize and then clean for the fight. But now, my next reform that we will be started. Avoidance of accountability. We need to be accountable and we need to be co responsible. Why? Because we will be called to account one day. Remember, you are eternal, you are not temporary. Okay. If there is anybody who sits here who knows the day that you are going to die, please stand. Very <laughs> good. We got the account. The last dysfunction of the team is inattention to results. When everybody is about themselves and when individual interest supersedes the interest of the party, the interest of the town, the interest of the region, then I focus on my personal interest. That is when I start taking the little emperors. That is when I start holding private meetings with certain donors, when I'm making private calls, and when I'm starting to build up my own kingdom. When I build my kingdom, the kingdom on this side will fall. So we either build together or we perish together as fools. We build together as brothers and sisters or we perish together as fools. On a concluding note, On a concluding note, I would like to share with you five responsibilities that the reward type of leaders avoid. There is a servant type of leader and there is a reward leader. Somebody who is in it for the fun. What can I get out of it? This leader is asking. What can I get the cream? What is in that for me? My <laughs> fellow leaders, when I was criticized for having a LPM talk speech at the uh, municipal installation, council's installation, I was very clear. I will never go along with nonsense. Never. I can stand alone. Whether it is the church, whether it is LPM, whether it is Swapo, Minister, President, whoever, the Pope, in, I will never stand in nonsense. You will hear it. When I went to religious life to become a priest, my mom told me, I'm going to ask my The LPM leadership let the people know who I am. Don't ask me a person. Don't ask me I'm just there, but I'm also just there, and I'm just there, but nothing changes. Let the people know how because you make a difference. Why? Because you are.
the difference. You are the difference. The very first one is that reward types of leaders don't like to handle uncomfortable situations. You know, they would postpone it, postpone it, postpone it until the, the organization will improve. The organization will improve. Why? Because people will not I'm I it, you know. I want to help. No, that's not it. You are. What's your benefit? You put someone down and tell him or her, good or bad. Brother, this is where we are. This is where we are. But don't just tell them where they are. If you treat people the way they are, they will remain there. Treat people the way they can be, and they will rise. They will rise. So don't tell them where they are and leave them there. Tell them, I can journey with you to get out of this. And this is how we can do it. Needed mentor said, Usman Dalas, basically. Basically, what you are committed to do to take them out of them. Yes. Secondly, managing your direct reports. Oh my God, this one is a difficult. Managing your direct reports. If you are a principal, your direct reports are your HODs. If you are an HOD, your direct reports are your subject heads. Managing your direct reports on a daily basis, calling them to order. Complimenting them when they do something good, but also calling them to order. It's very important. If you do not manage your direct report, there will be lapses and there will be loopholes in the leadership structure. And if there are loopholes, I was a man in the market. I used to hide the blank. There's the word of God. Ask any hard or too much. So I am in the market. If I need a garden, so they have the nonsense from the side. And not only nonsense from the side, so free them, free them. So layers open them to and that's how they open the sassy plumb and service delivery will also fail. When you are a leader, you have to run meetings. Leaders who are reward leaders hate you. For a soccer player, the place where he shines is the soccer pitch. For a basketball player, it's on the basketball field. For somebody who plays netball or volleyball, it's on the netball or volleyball court. Where a leader shines is in the middle. This is your place. This is where you shine. This is where you dissect. This is where you guide. This is where you cast a vision and you put in place steps how we can get to this vision. What is a vision? Vision is a picture of the future that makes me enthusiastic. What is the picture of Yapiok's future? Does it make me sit up at night, two o'clock in the morning, wake up my wife and say, Have you been reached there yet? And my wife says, I soon to go on with you and I have been with you. That is how enthusiastic you are about the vision of the Albi. Why? Because it is not his vision. It is not Savior's vision. It is your vision. Charles Foley. So you don't mind to do team building because it's a touchy feeling, you know? Man of most people are a touchy feeling. Team building is very important. Why? Because team building unleashes the hidden forces in each one of us. Because we discover each other through play, through leisure, through socializing. We build one another. We discover one another. Once we have discovered each other, we can add value to one another and we can unleash each other. One of our greatest problems as African leaders, and I have spent a great deal of reading up African leadership. I have started in 2007, and I have seen, because I have been asking, why am I going for? And I have read about it from Egypt or from Ghana until South Africa at the time. All the African leaders have gone the same way. Building buildings 
constructing buildings. Yes. It's not leadership. Mm -hmm. Our people don't eat buildings. Yes. Our people are not eating. <laughs> Our people are not eating the past. There are children who are sitting here. I'm a younger myself than others. There are children sitting here who are leaders who are not born. During the apocalypse, they don't know. Should they be blamed for life because they did not experience apocalypse? And the reward types of leaders do not like to repeat themselves. The essence of teaching is repetition. The essence of teaching is repetition. You need to repeat again and again and again. You need to continuously repeat yourself. Now, how do I repeat? I repeat because I am convinced. Why? Because I have owned, I have personalized this vision, this objective, this policy. I have personalized it. Why and how do I do I uh, share it? Because I have owned it myself. That's why I continuously repeat it so that I can hear it myself. But those who are under me have no excuse. They have no reason to say, I do not know why, because I have repeated it I've over and over. My fellow leaders, as I said, history will, be, will not be silent. Um, it's very important for us to equip a legacy of principled service to our descendants, not an inheritance of shame. From which they may never recover. Yeah. I thank you. Reverend Charles, those days when he was not in uh, the current position was Chuck. Chuck Holliard. Uh, Reverend Charles Holliard comes from a place called New Tamtek. What is it? Swarpal. From here, you go past Hippion, past Asap, you proceed to the city of Tess, <laughs> you turn left, you turn left. Google does not pick up those places. <laughs> he comes from that place in the Valfras Tess Reservoir. Raised by a single mother, son of the soil. Parmanta van Afti large school. But has always demonstrated capability of, of not only oratory skills. And we've been friends. He was, uh, as he said, some years ahead of me. And you know, as you said, when your friends get to places, man, that achievement is as good as your own. Yes. So we are so proud of you. Man. We are so grateful for your direct and upfront engagement with us. It is as if you were reading the founding documents of this party and repeating it in a very passionate way. We thank the Lord for your life, for your willingness to have come. I went to him when we uh, were here for a meeting uh, to go to the church, but actually to meet with him. And that day he was busy with schoolwork and we engaged for three hours. 
It is there that I invited him. And he said, some other parties have invited me. But I said, no. But you, because I believe in what we stand for, I will accept that invitation. So I thank you very much for having come. You have sat down here. I was watching carefully since yesterday. You were internalizing the issues. You fully understand our challenges that we have. And I want to repeat what I said yesterday again. We have resource persons. Father Charles Colliard is one such resource person. When often you have this contradiction, that I have this debt that I need to pay. There is this decision that I must make of this company that is going to pay the services for my car that is 60,000. Go to Reverend and say, Reverend, I have become morally weak. I want to take this money, but please intercede for me intercede for me because that is what defines character what do you do when you are alone when nobody sees what do you do and when Zuma was president he came once to the Swapo office we were still at Swapo and he started to talk about this question of corruption he said hey, you have a human being <laughs> you place him in a room Close the room and there is in the middle of it a huge calabash and a, a fruit uh, basket. There's nobody in the room. <laughs> this human being starts to be tempted. He checks, recognizes there are no cameras. Starts to take one and puts it in. No consequence. Takes another and another and another. And you can see the same Zuma who said it, what happened to him. <laughs> I'm telling you, some of the leaders in Swapo people like the current president, were strong in fighting corruption when they were prime ministers. As time progressed, they did Once your moral and ethical compass collapses, you cease to be about all of us and you start to be about yourself. So I'm so inspired. And I want to thank you for having accepted the invitation. I stood up to do so personally because the invitation I went to issue personally to you, so I want to thank you. And I want LPMers to internalize what Reverend was saying here. Spoke about Daniel, spoke about the question of service. And the day that we were engaging, I asked him, why is it that Christ loved David so much? David had many concubines. At some stage, he ordered a general uh, in order to kill that general so that he can benefit from the fruits of the wife of that man. And the reverend told me, David, the moment a prophet of God would tell him, you have sinned and God is not happy, he would become naked and immediately start repenting. If you make mistakes at least immediately start to repent. And the mercy that we have as humans, that we owe to each other, will also befall you. So thank you very much. We love you so much. Keep on being who you are, Reverend. Keep on being who you are. Uh, they, they think you are an old 70-year-old uh, man. <laughs> But he is still young and strong, and we wish you all the best. Uh, 
I just want to take time to introduce John Nakuta. He will not speak an intellectual giant. No, he's a giant. He has what Henny and I sometimes are asking. Why can't we become sometimes? <laughs> Whether you tell John Nakuta that his car was stolen or his house is on fire, he will say, oh, okay. <laughs> we are the same way. We are so pleased, Dr. Nakuta. Every time you reaffirm your revolutionary credentials, Every time when we meet your servants and that huge brain of yours, you say, I'll be there, I'll help you, I will do my best. This is exactly what Reverend Charles is talking about. Mm -hmm. Service to each other. And you know, when I spoke to him, and that's how Pastor Reverend, after I spoke to you, I was now trying to show how much I know the Bible. And I said to them, <laughs> Genesis 6, verse 6, where God actually regretted having created mankind. Go read. Those of us that read the Bible know this is very well. <laughs> God regretted it, that he created human beings. That's why there was a flood. Our responsibility as a party, as he correctly put it, is to genuinely love each other. We must search for that deep, beautiful place inside ourselves and love each other. And ultimately, when society sees that these people love each other and that we stick together, they too will fall in love with us. And at the end of the day, they say, it's a love affair between the leaders and the people. It's a love affair. That's why when some political party ruling for 31 years, even when they made mistakes, kept on being given the vote because of the love and because of the good old days and because of what they stood for until people could no longer take it. Protect your heart from hating the next leader. Protect your heart from falling in love with money. And seek a relationship with your creator, with Christ. For he too was tempted and he withstood the temptations. I am not asking for perfect leadership. There is nothing like that. But in this experiment, let's rise to the occasions that we can be. Many have said we are a one ethnic party. I regret to inform them, we will never be a one ethnic party. We are for Namibia and we are for Africa. Yes. We love each and every one of us. So I go and sit on that note and also thank the colleagues and i think lunch is ready yes yes uh, uh, i give to leader antonio thank you so much uh, just a quick announcement there is uh, attendance register that is circulating please make sure that we all complete the attendance register it is here in front here yeah, as the colleagues uh, attendance register so please let us just make sure that we complete the attendance register and then again um, all the councillors that didn't yet um, see me that will immediately at the break quickly see her for the t-shirt um, once we, we, we are done and then leaders um, we are bringing for lunch now the lunch is ready exactly at 13.59 we need to resume here this morning we, we were not really that that we do not punctuality so immediately at 1359 we should all assemble so that at 1400